Hey guys, James here from Bite Size English. I've just been, well, educating myself to make sure I get some new content for you guys. And you know what to do with the tube. She's the second person to arrive. She doesn't know the person sitting there on the screen, but she knows this is a potential colleague. She freezes like a deer in headlights. Oh God, the thought comes to her. She has to make small talk. What does she do? What will she say? Hi, I'm Dora, and welcome to a new and exciting episode of Bite Size English, your daily bite of English. Today we have some tips for making small talk. When you're done listening, look for a worksheet with vocabulary and grammar points in the extra bite section on our website for this episode at bitesizeenglish.com. Are you ready? Quick, what are some topics that you're comfortable talking about in your language when making small talk with a stranger? Make friends, not enemies. In an ever-changing world, you learn to adapt to different, sometimes awkward situations. Finding ways to chat with people eases that awkwardness. Here are the top tips for making small talk. Look out for a follow-up video on making small talk at work. When making new acquaintances, people want to feel special and you can help with that. But using your phone in full view of everyone tells other people, I'm too busy and you're not special enough to talk to. So if you're open to an adventure of having casual conversations, put the phone away. Putting a pause on texting, tweeting, or Instagramming isn't going to kill you, or will it? Open-ended questions are ones that ask people for more than just a simple yes-no answer, like asking about their opinions, facts about a topic, even what they've been doing lately. These show interest in that person, and in turn, they will ask you, you fabulous person you, what your opinions are and what your wonderful interests are. When listening to a person, show that you're keen. Ask them follow-up questions about what they just said so you show interest. A follow-up question would be a question that you ask based on what the person has just said. So yes, your listening skills will be tested in order for you to ask that follow-up. It also means you need to have a face and make expressions that match that interest. For some cultures, looking like this is showing great respect and deep appreciation of every word your new friend is saying. But to us here in an English-speaking world, we might think that we bore you, or you're not paying attention, or you have some difficulty understanding what's being said. For some, seeing North Americans have casual discussions might look like a weird pantomime. We show enthusiasm with not only our eyes, but our bodies as well. And we make noises like, aha, uh -huh. yep, hmm. Interesting, is that so? Unfortunately, silence in English speaking countries make people feel uneasy. So practice those enthusiastic mannerisms if it's not something you do normally. So what small talk topics did your list include? The weather, sports, entertainment, travel, work, hobbies, food, and just even the place you're in right now. These are all safe topics to ask open-ended questions about. There are definitely taboo topics to avoid when making small talk. The top taboo topics are politics, race, ethnicity, religion, health, money, and sex. Don't let conversations fall flat. It's like a game of ping pong where people throw questions and make statements back and forth. So what could you say? A simple way to make small talk is to state an opinion about any of those topics and then add, isn't it, at the end of your statement. Social conventions dictate that your listeners should respond back unless they want to be seen as rude. Great city we're in, isn't it? Remember your goal is to get the person to respond back. So even though it could be the dullest city in the world, they will respond either way. And if they only answer yes or no, ask a follow-up question like, what have you seen here so far that you would recommend or that you would recommend to avoid? 
Tell me, which cities have you been to? Again, you're trying to get them to make small talk with open-ended questions. Let's say they mention something you aren't familiar with. You could say, I'm not familiar with that, but I'd be interested in knowing more. What was that you said? Well, I don't know anything about it, but please go on. Really? That's news to me. So you were saying? You could state your own opinion about what they said. Do you remember all those expressions that are variations of I think? Pause the video right here. Give yourself a minute to think up a list. You got it? Here are some sentence starters. You could say, just off the top of my head, I feel that, well, the way I see it, know what I think? And then after you stated what you think, you can pass the conversation back to them with another follow-up question like, and what do you think about that? How do you feel about that? And what's your take on that? When at your next social function, have a game plan. Know what you will try to ask and anticipate what you might hear and then have some follow-up questions handy. Preparation and practice can help overcome any anxiety or fear about making small talk in English. Good luck. That's all for today, folks. Remember to click subscribe and like, share with friends and comment below, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching and see you soon.